hey guys what's up so in this one we are going to go ahead and start talking about code splitting and implement some lazy loading techniques to some of the some pieces of our code so that we can in general speed up the real time of the application so some of the common use cases to use lazy loading in our in your apps would be let's say you have an application that allows normal users and admins to log in you literally would not want to load the like, code that is supposed to be used by the admin when a normal user logs in. So what you can do is you can lazy load, lazy load the routes to the login section and also when the user logs in. So you can only load them when the user tries to access them. So of course, in our case, we have a very simple application. In fact, like lazy loading might not be needed here. But to show you how you can implement it, we have something called Suspense in React and also Dynamic Imports. So what you can do is instead of us right here in, is in the routes. So instead of us, where are they? So instead of us importing them like this, we can rather use dynamic imports such that that code, such that the code in those components can only be loaded when we try to access the modules themselves. So what you can do is we need to, to use react.lazy. So this is actually new. And then we use the, the dynamic import. So let's say we want users to come to the application, but actually users might want to only see their contact list. So not regularly would they want to create a contact. So we can actually lazy load the create contact just to see how it works. So here we need to import lazy from React. So import lazy from, you guessed it, React. So for us, instead of importing create, create contact like this, we can have const create contact. So this is gonna be equal to lazy. So lazy takes in a function. So in the function, so in the function, we can return the import. So now we can have import, then this. Okay, so let's make sure we are doing that. Okay, and then we can go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, let's see, make sure this is correct. All right, so once we have this, we need to set up a fallback. So the fallback would be what happens when we are loading this. So let's see, we return a promise until we have loaded this module. So we need to provide a fallback to the application so that it knows what to do when we are loading a module. So we can go to the app.js. So here inside the router, we can have all our routes in suspense. So we have React Suspense, so we're gonna import Suspense actually. So then everything will be in Suspense. Okay, so Suspense will require us to give it a fallback. So you can give it a fallback. So this is the content that will be shown when we are loading a route or when we are dynamically loading in a module. So it's, it actually doesn't work with only routes. You can load in any piece of code using dynamic imports and yeah, so as it loads, as I said, it runs the promise. So as it loads, when the promise is still pending, we can provide the way for it to show. So I'm gonna have a simple P here, and then I'm gonna have loading here. All right, so once I do that, we can go to the application. We need to import lazy like this. Okay, so if you come back, you see the application loads, and notice what happens when I click on create contact. So when I click on create contact, like this, it's going to now load that route on demand. And now that it has loaded it, of course, it can be as fast as it should be. But when it's the first time, so in the first load, that code for the create contact is not added, meaning that in turn, we can get a faster app load time. And yeah, so that's going to do it for the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.